What's up, YouTube? And I'm gonna put up one more deck, a third deck of mine. Out of all the other decks I have, I'm putting up one that I recently made, and it's only dueled, I believe, three times. It lost its first duel. Its second duel it won, but its third duel won it how five amazing pieces came together. But you'll learn more about that soon enough. I'm pretty sure you already know. Anywho, here's the deck. Hope you enjoy it. So just don't copy. It's for my heart, not yours. It's for the show to help you understand what other people do do. do, do, do. Anywho, I only run two cards in the extra deck. I run Black Rose Dragon and Stardust Dragon. They're the only ones I ever need in this because it doesn't really go based on the, the extra deck. It just, those seem to came in handy for the deck eventually. Now, what I am going to tell you is not many people I've seen use this card. And honestly, when it comes to a deck that doesn't really care on too much strong monsters, but it does and doesn't, but taking damage is could be a helpful thing, I added this, the Inferno Tempest spell card. Not only that, I've also added to the deck Alpha, the Magnet Warrior. I actually have two of him. Not only do I have two of him, I have two Betas and two Gammas in here, and only one Valkyrion. I have one day of peace for two reasons. One, it allows me to draw one card. But secondly, nobody takes damage for until the opponent's next turn at the end. Um, here's one of those many five pieces. The left leg of the Forbidden One. Which pretty much tells you why there's a one day apiece now. I also added Book of Moon. Now, most of these cards you're going to be like, okay, he runs Exodia. So he's going to have a shit ton of drawing cards, right? Not exactly the way you would expect, actually, how an Exodia deck would run. This doesn't just rely on Exodia. It does and doesn't. It actually relies on itself as well. I balance everything the best I can with my love. And at perfect rate as well my heart says. Enemy controller I use. Now most people like it for both effects. Me, I only use enemy controller to, to defend myself actually. Now I run a draining shield, of course. It helps to allow you to keep some life points in the, the game. And a mirror force. Wonderful, right? Well, here's a card people have been hating. Mainly my cousin because it's one of the reasons how I one, but so is a monster reincarnation, a top runner, and regaining a piece of Exodia from my grave to my hand by my own choosing with hand destruction. Hand destruction, my cousin despises. What happened in the duel, pretty much, he pretty much lost because hand destruction and monster reincarnation helped me win. I run two of them. And that's all I need. It makes both players discard and draw two cards. I run one Chainsaw and Sack. Now, yes, I know, it doesn't allow me to draw. But it makes my opponent draw a card. But other than that, it's a good attack. And sometimes you gotta be nice if you're gonna try and win. Or, as I like to do, have fun. And if I win or lose, I don't care. Here's one of my many betas. I have two of each of the Magnet Warriors, not only because they it's an extra amount chance to summon Valkyrion, but also because they both, all three, have a decent attack. Here is Mag Magical Mallet. I've run one if I don't like my hand. And the reason why is because I can keep a couple cards from my hand and get rid of what I don't want and see what I have by chance. It's a way of game of chance, pretty much. The Secret Rare Gamma the Magnet Warrior from the video game. I believe so. Yeah. Uh, I run a Deep Diver, which is another card that helped me get a piece. It, if it's destroyed by battle, you can choose one monster card from your deck and place it on the top of your deck. And that's how I got my third piece in the duel that won. Magician of Faith, I originally had Pixie Knight. 
and almost misplayed with her. I thought I got to choose. Here, it turned out my opponent did. So, luckily, they did give me a card because everything else kind of would have screwed them. So, they gave me a card that allows me to draw cards. Um, Magician of Faith, though, took her place because then I get to choose. Because sometimes you want other cards besides drawing. Old Vindictive Magician, of course, I had to add. Its effect is brutal, and people don't like going up against something that destroys a monster after they kill it, or if it's flipped, you know. I added the Threatening Roar, a pretty decent card. It'll, you can play it as soon as you you can, you know. After you set it and you end your turn, you can do whatever after they draw, pretty much. Um, the end of Anubis comes in handy, because I don't have much that involves my graveyard, so the end of Anubis does help. It will probably end up getting sided for some times, but not all the time. It's pretty much mainly in the deck. Axe of Fools, I love to use. And no, I don't use it on my monsters. I use it on my opponents because the person with the monster loses the 500. The equipped monster with, gains 1,000 attack, and, if it's and its effects are negated. During each of your standby phases, inflict a 500 damage to your to the controller of the equipped monster. I also, of course, have Valkyrie and the Magnet Warrior, the one from the legendary Dex Yugi. I also had my second Gamma from the legendary Dex. Here is a second piece of Exodia, the left arm. Here is the a third piece, Exodia the Forbidden One, the head. Here's one of my tuners I use in the deck, which is a top runner. Very good way to just bring out a level 8. Now, I wonder how I bring out a level 7, you might wonder. I might actually add two more monsters to the extra deck eventually. I do run a Wabaku. Here's my second beta. And here's Mystical Space Typhoon. I also run Monster Reincarnation. It does come in handy very well. The Alpha the Magnet Warrior from the video game. And here is the right leg of the Forbidden One. All we're missing is one more piece, and I think all five have revealed in the video. Um, Guardian Sphinx comes in handy for its defense and its effect, actually. And plus, I figured Exodia would want a Sphinx in his deck. Uh, Swords of Revealing Light comes in pretty decent handy. Now, usually... I've noticed every deck has swords, but I've seen a couple decks that I liked that people use with Exodia having a swords, and there's another dude who actually ran Swords of Van Light, the Nightmare Steel Cage, and a Traffic Control. And what eventually ended up happening was even though he was stalling so much, it was so obvious. And what I like to do is not make it too, too obvious. But here's my second tuner, which is Delta Flyer. Now, if I stand corrected, I only have two in the deck. But I have a Monster Reincarnation, so it's the only thing I have to worry about, really, with Anubis. Windstorm of Atequa is a really great trap card. I actually... Uh, it, I have, I think it's the Ultra or Secret Rare of it. And that was my very first Windstorm of Atequa I ever got. And I was given it as, I believe it was a Christmas present. A random Christmas present. It was a Windstorm and three other cards. And I ended up adding the Windstorm to a deck of mine. And I believe it's still in that deck today. And it has helped me one... At least 25 duels with that exact deck. And that deck has dueled more duels than I could ever count in my head. Because I don't even remember how many I've dueled with it. Defense Draw. Um, I used to love using the Defense Draw when it came out. But this is the only deck I run with it now. And I only use one. Because this deck I can risk my life points actually. Because it stalls and destroys pretty much and lets me draw a couple cards. Not much, actually. I also have the Tricky, which allows me to discard stuff. And 
special summon it, which allows me to have a second summon pretty much, which is a normal summon, but I have to special summon it first. To, I do that to make it fair to others, even though it, I don't, it doesn't matter, but yeah. I run a Lightning Vortex. I only run, I believe, one Reckless Greed. Yeah, I only run one, and there's a reason why. I do run two Reckless Greeds in one deck, which involves Slifer, but I run it not to support Slifer fully. It also helps me get to other cards because it's not just for Slifer in the deck. Because it runs Wing Dragon Raw, Sphere Mode, and Wing Dragon Raw. But it also runs my Hermos. And I love using Hermos, especially when. You, because Slifer and Raw, if even one's on the field and you have a card that's pretty decent of attack, and you end up reckless greeting more than twice in numerous duels with the deck and get. Hermos, and uh, at least one of the cards you need for the fusion. Comes in handy to equip. I added Armored B because this deck seems to have gone up a lot to against, I'd say, the highest attack I've ever versed it. I am not kidding you at all. Was um, a card that someone kept boosting up, and they could have won, and they ended up still losing the duel. And that monster reached, I think it was, 11,400 attack points. By its card effect, and I think it was two equip spells. And I have dueled a lot of strong monsters. The highest I've ever versed, though, is 19,400 within the last two months. Now, if I told you the exact from within every duel I've ever dueled, the strongest attack I've ever dueled was actually 50,000. And that was when the god cards came out and people pretty much played with the non-legal god cards, which were not ever legal at that time. You only found fakes and ones that could not be used in duels. Um, but... I've versed someone who actually used the Slifer, knowing all of its effects and stuff. And this Slifer got up to 50,000 because they risked it all. And at that time, people usually even had like 55 cards in their deck. It, it, it was like everybody just having fun, you know. And Slifer pretty much ended up 50,000 because they had almost their whole deck in their hand because of infinite cards. Um, the final piece of Exodia, right arm of the Forbidden One, called the Haunted. Okay, I guess I have two cards in Bold Grave, pretty much then. Called the Haunted, though, comes in handy pretty well for this deck. It has helped me. I usually use it for Armored B or um, one of my other monsters that protect me with good, decent attack and a good effect. Another Threatening Roar, and the only other card that allows me to draw stuff but I have to be patient with it as well, is the Shard of Greed. Pretty much the only way you're going to have a Pot of Greed in your deck with it being legal is the Shard of Greed. Honestly, if Pot of Greed ever got unbanned, which it technically could be stopped anyway, but nobody's going to let it, probably, from Konami, but it's all good. There's Reckless Greed, Shard of Greed, who knows? Two defense draws. <laughs> um... But, pretty much what I'm saying is, if it were to get unbanned, Shard of Greed would get taken out for a Pot of Greed. Just so I, I could just get it done and over with, pretty much. Honestly, when it comes to cutting, I go berserk. I want to make sure... I cut a deck pretty decent, and when I go Berserk, I then do the original after shuffling the deck originally. I'll shuffle and then do a normal cut, and to me, a normal cut is a cut of three. So, just going to do a quick little cut. The hell was that sound? Anywho, I will take the first one, 
put it on top of the second. Then I'll take the bottom of the third, put it under the second, and then I'll take a bit of the middle, put it on the first. Put the third on the first, and put that on top. Usually, but sometimes I just shuffle it, cut it like the original one, two, three, and then shuffle it again, then cut it. I do a lot of stuff. That's pretty much my Exodia deck, and honestly, my opinion on a deck, if you want to run Exodia, don't make it so obvious, but don't make it too hard to get a piece or two, but don't make it that you want the duel to end so quickly, actually try to have fun. That's where people fail with Exodia decks sometimes, because... I used to have a three different Exodia decks, and two failed, one did not. One actually ended up succeeding, and it involved me getting Exodia from the graveyard to my hand, and from my deck to my hand. What I would do was Foolish Burial and deck out cards, like, I had Hand Destruction, Card Destruction, Graceful Charity was in that. This was when Cyber Jar was still legal. So I had a Cyber Jar. I had a Rigorous Reaver when Cyber Jar was banned. I added Rigorous Reaver in its place. Um, I ran two Needle Worms. I ran like Morphing Jars, number two and stuff, and Morphing Jar. I just ran cards that decked both you and your opponent out. And I also had cards that brought things from the grave for me and or for my opponent. Like, I ran two Shallow Graves in that deck. And I was like, okay, I'm going to be nice. And then I ran a Monster Reborn. Like, I eventually removed the Shallow Grave, though. The second one, at least. And ended up having Grave Keeper Servant. It was pretty much an Exodia deck as a last resort. It was more a deck out deck. I ended up removing all five pieces of Exodia, making a full out deck out deck. And then the deck got banned permanently. Like, most of the cards I had to remove, because they were banned, and all this. Like, it was a deck out deck, but it had, like, Pot of Greed. Pot of Avarice was replaced for a lot of cards, too, until that got banned. Card Destruction, I had to uh, remove eventually, and had a second hand Destruction. I ended up removing Monster Reborn for, I think, it was a third hand destruction, and I removed that for a different card, but yeah, that's pretty much the deck, I'm getting off topic as usual, um, but yeah, hope you liked it.